Hello guys, how's it going? Um, I am here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just, it's just a quickie really. I'm here, it's 5am. <laughs> Couldn't sleep. Um, I've been asked to look at this Triumph TR6. Um, she's a bit rough, but the owner is restoring it. And initially I thought it was carbureted. And then I actually looked at the badge, saw injection. So, oh no, 1970s fuel injection, it must be K-Jet. But it's not. Something else. Uh, I haven't forgotten about the K-Jet video. In case you can't tell from the improved quality of this video, I've been very, very kindly, I've been lent a handicam by um, Farm Boys Railway. He's like one of my oldest friends. Um, and my GoPro came down with a bad case of broken. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm rambling. I just wanted to show you this, so I've, I've got the dizzy out and I've, I need to retime the whole engine. It's been faffed about with so much now, I'm, I don't know where we are with it. So, dizzy's out, I'm going to take all the plugs out, turn the engine over by hand, find TDC. Hopefully the dog leg will line up, if not I can move that around, because um, they do actually lift out of the oil pump drive and rotate. So that's all fine. Anyway, um, isn't that an interesting bit of kit? Yes, it's leaking, I know, I need to I need to look at that. Um, I've had the unit off because the fuel tank was full of rust. The fuel filter was made of rust. And long story cut massively short, I um, I stripped everything down. I just, I took this out. I didn't take it completely apart, I just took it out and uh, made sure it was nice and clean inside. And it is actually spotless inside. So fuel pressure was des was deemed to be the problem. So I've made a new fuel line. We found a really badly pancaked bit of fuel line. <clears throat> so that's all back in. And now we have enough pressure to produce a fuel leak, which is actually a good thing because before the fuel wasn't even coming out of the poppet valves. But just a quick explanation of how this works because I thought it was fascinating and I'm probably not gonna get an opportunity to do this video again, especially in the workshop because it's nice and quiet. Um, this system is fascinating. It is like a combination of um, a diesel system and K-Jet. So <clears throat> you have a really high pressure fuel pump in the boot into a filter, uh, travels all the way to the front of the car into this guy here, that's your inlet. Uh, and this system operates at 100 PSI. So quite a high pressure system. And then inside this body here, uh, let's see if I can zoom in, I'm trying to not get the camera dirty. There we go, okay. So, inside this body here, you've just got a cylinder, and it just rotates, it's driven off the distributor drive, hence why it joins onto the body here. So as the distributor rotates that way, you've got like a 90 degree drive essentially, and that rotates the cylinder. The cylinder has two holes in it that line up with each bank of injectors, and there are three injectors per bank, one, two, and a third underneath. And um, yeah, basically they are, I think about, I think they're 180 degrees out. So as it rotates, there's just literally a hole. Your high pressure fuel is sat in there building up. And as this rotates, it will come round and reveal the hole to the relevant injector. And then the high pressure fuel then presses against the poppet valve let me zoom out here, it's a bit wobbly. The, uh, the high pressure fuel then presses against the poppet valve, which sprays the fuel up the line and into the injector. Um, so that side of things is like a standard diesel motor, really, like of an old school mechanical diesel system. Uh, and there's your injectors over there. Spray onto the back of the valves. And believe it or not, this is actually kind of more advanced than K-Jetronic in the capacity that it's really early sequential fuel injection it fires in time with the engine whereas Kjetronic fires um, all the time it just runs continuously spraying a quarter of the amount of fuel that's needed onto the back of the valve per stroke um, and obviously by the time the valve opens that charge is then ready and it's drawn in whereas this actually fires as the valve opens which is pretty impressive really for 1960s technology I, I, I say that like the 1960s wasn't an impressive time for technology in general. It absolutely was. But 
mechanical sequential fuel injection. I, I, I just think that that's just fascinating to me. Um, anyway, the, the bit of it that's very similar to cage electronic is that to control the amount of fuel that's dosed at the time, because obviously you're going to need a different amount of fuel depending on the um, <coughs> range and demand of the engine, you, you have a, a diaphragm and spring in this body here, the bit that looks like a bit of a bell housing, that is pressing against the cam. Um, and basically it wants to let out the maximum amount of fuel, so it's pressing against the cam. Hang on. Uh, am I remembering this right? This is going to have to be a one take wonder by the way because I've got no editing software. So, um, Oh no. No, no, tell a lie, sorry. It's going... Yeah, no, 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 it is. It's going that way. <laughs> because the pressure build up is in here pushing the diaphragm that way. Um, you've then got a cam follower in this housing here that rides on the back of that diaphragm and just moves the cylinder back and forth and there's basically a, an aperture and you get the effect of pinching the line which reduces the fuel supply. It's probably not a very good way to explain it, I know, but it's, it's the best of my understanding currently of what seems to be according to a lot of forums and stuff, a very complicated fuel system. I don't see as it's that complicated, but I can see how it would be hard to wrap your head around. Um, and this guy in here, oh yeah, yeah, so the, the way it meters the fuel demand on the engine is you've just got this vacuum line coming down from the manifold, and depending on the manifold depression, it lifts uh, an armature via another vacuum diaphragm, so there's plenty to go wrong. <laughs> Bless them. They're very much like a Peerberg, the only way they could get stuff to actuate reliably back then was with vacuum. Um, but yeah, so you end up with the vacuum depression pulling on the armature, which pulls the cam follower closer or further away from the diaphragm, allowing additional fuel flow. And your cold start is done with this lever down here, which basically just overrides that process. Uh, there. That overrides that process. Um, and allows you to manually enrich the mixture very much like a well it, it even has a choke cable on it it's just a standard British Leyland choke cable that you pull out and lock the only difference is obviously there are no carburetors it just pulls on that um, and, and there's your fuel system essentially the only trouble I'm having currently basically this thing will not start it, it, it wouldn't even try to fire before and it's doing the same now so we've got a new coil because the spark's not looking great I'm going to whip out all the plugs, time the engine up, and then, once I've got that all dialed in, I need to have a look at this, make sure it's timed up right, which is why I'm not too concerned about the fuel leak, because it's probably got to come out again. But I want to make sure the motor's timed up so we can eliminate that factor, because these units start at about £200. Um, and really, the condition it's in inside, I really don't think he needs one. And... I mean, I'm not. This is a, this is a a, a favour. This job, I'm, I'm not. Do you know what I mean? It's not. So I'm not working long term on the car or anything like that. Just having a look. And to be honest with you, it piqued my interest. I, lo I love a I love a new fuel system. I've, I find fuel systems really interesting for some reason. Um, so yeah, that that's about that really. Um, I I just thought thought you guys might be interested. Um, and even possibly if there are people with compressors just kicked on. Um, and even possibly if there are some people out there trying to understand how that unit works because it's quite an intimidating looking thing there's a lot of lines and it's kind of it's got that Lucas British Leylandy sort of slapdash execution it works really really well but they kind of designed it to work as opposed to be tidy like if that was German made that would be so um, what's the what's the word uh, efficient in its design but as you can see it takes up a pretty colossal amount of space um, but then again how would you get your rotational distribution unless you spread it out like that it's kind of like the crankshaft pattern of the engine really anyway that's gonna that's gonna probably do it um, I was gonna make a video on my Rover I think I still am going to about just about the economics of running a banger because basically I snapped a drive shaft at work yesterday on my way to a job which really irritated me more, more at the fact that I was obviously wanting to go off to work. Um, I could probably turn you around for this bit, to be fair. All right. Um, yeah, so basically, 
it irritated me and then I realized I've spent hardly any money on that car and it has never ever broken down, at the, it's never left me at the side of the road, ever. I've done 25,000 miles in it and I paid £99 for it two and a half years ago. So really, I, <laughs> um, I, I was never pondering getting rid of it, um, there's no two ways about it, it's a drive shaft. If it was one of my Roccos, I'd do it in a heartbeat. So. It's not really wanted for anything and it's never let me down. And I just wanted to make a video on that really and just, yeah, say to you guys that an, a decent affordable used car that you can use to run around in and beat the crap out of can be had for good money. Anyway, um, obviously it is, as you can see from how dark it is outside, it's very, very early. I haven't had enough coffee or cigarettes. So I'm going to go do that. Hopefully I will see you in another video about the Rover. Hopefully some of you are interested in that. I might even do one about the um, about the fuel injection on that because that's another, it's, it's, all, it's all interesting in its own way. That's got a very primitive computer in it. So yeah, <laughs> all right. I'm gonna get out of here. I need a coffee and my hair is awful. So <laughs> have a good one guys, take care. Cheers for watching.